Hello everyone, today we're working on a 2018 Silverado. This has a 5.3 engine and it has the 8-speed automatic. We're going to be doing a transmission filter change and changing out the fluid. Uh, first item we have here is the filter. And here's the part number for that filter for that 8-speed tranny. This is the AC Delco number. And the fluid we'll be using today will be the Amsoil uh, Low Viscosity Synthetic ATF. Here's a spec sheet on the Amsoil Synthetic ATF, the signature series. And uh, first thing I want to show you here is there's two different ones here listed on this page. One is this uh, red one is the older formulation, uh, multi-vehicle synthetic ATF. And uh, then the blue bag here, this one right here, is uh, it's a low viscosity, fuel efficient synthetic ATF. And that's what most of your newer transmissions are going to call for. Um, the thing about this uh, chemical engineering synthetic is it uh, reduces the operating temperature of your transmission by 20 to 50 degrees over petroleum-based fluids. And uh, the, the life of the fluid is significantly longer as well. As you uh, drop that temperature out of that transmission, all the soft parts inside last a whole lot longer. All the seals, uh, all the piston seal rings. Um, as you drop the heat by 20 to 50 degrees, the life of those soft components goes up significantly and that extends your transmission life. And as an example, we have a uh, uh, taxi fleet, severe service taxi fleet field, uh, field trial. This was in Las Vegas. Um, what they did is they run the Amsoil for 180,000 miles in the transmission and uh, they selected the transmission to, to tear apart and see how everything looked. And what you're, sh you're seeing here is the synthetic Amsoil, um, even after 180,000 miles, contained 83% of its original oxidation inhibitors. And uh, you can see the, the valve body here looks absolutely beautiful. Uh, the clutches, again, they're clean, uh, very little signs of wear on them, uh, very good condition. Um, this is the kind of protection in the desert heat of Las Vegas that the Amsoil provides. So one of the best ways to extend the life of your transmission is through the use of that Amsoil Signature Series ATF. As we go down to this next sheet here, it gives you all the specifications, all the uh, ASTM specifications here on the two, two products. The ATF is the older formulation. The ATL is the low viscosity right here. So as we go to the specifications, here's the applications for the older ATF. And this is just part of them. The, other, the rest of it's at the top of the other page. I'll show you that here. Right here is the remainder of the specs for that older ATF. And then right here is the specifications for the low viscosity ATF for most of the newer transmissions. So this gives you uh, all the specifications for that fluid. And uh, it shows you significantly how much better that performs than the regular fluids out there. Uh, if you want to extend the life of your automatic transmission, this uh, chemical engineered synthetic signature series Amsoil is the best way to do it. I also have a fluidcapacity.com website, and this will uh, give you an opportunity to look up your vehicle's fluid capacities. And uh, right here is a blue button, Auto and Light Truck Fluid Lookup Guide. And as you go to that, it'll bring up this page, this landing page here. Type in the year of the vehicle. This is a 2018. And you hit Build List. brings up uh, all the vehicles A to Z. And we're looking for Chevrolet trucks. And it's a Silverado 1500 with a 6.2. And over here, first thing I want to show you is we have a print button. If you want to print this off for each of your vehicles, and then down below here it gives you all the fluids that Amsoil recommends in each cavity, from the engine to the uh, transmission differential transfer case, um, all the fluids. And down a little bit lower, we get the uh, filters, oil filters, air filters. Uh, if there's any lubrication points, it'll uh, give them to you. And then we get into the capacities here. It gives you the engine, cooling system, transmission, differential, transfer case. Then also down below we have the uh, torques for uh, some of the plugs. So very handy, uh, something that uh, you might find useful for your other vehicles as well. And on this transmission, there's no dipstick. So there's a check stand standpipe inside the transmission. And uh, check it at, at uh, cold. Uh, you don't have it up to temp when you check the fluid level. And the other thing is you must have the truck level when you check the uh, fluid as well. So those are a couple things to keep in mind, but uh, we're going to first off do a, a level check on this one to see where it's at before we start. And then uh, we'll start with uh, taking down the pan and changing out that filter. So we'll get started and be back with you. 
Okay, the fill plug for this 8-speed transmission is right up here, kind of right behind this heat shield. And this is on the passenger side of the tranny. There's three bolts pulled off, and they're 10 millimeter head. There's one right here, and then up here on top, there's another one right here. And then if you go back further, kind of where the white pipe is at on the exhaust, there's another one, and it comes down from the top. Now, what I've got is a flex head ratchet to be able to get on those top ones, because I don't know how else you're going to be able to do that. Or if you've got like a gear wrench or ratchet wrench, that'll bend 90 degrees with a flex head. So that's where we get to uh, get to that fill port, and uh, I'm going to get this out of the way, and then we'll show it to you. Actually, I don't think I need to take that back one out. I think I got enough room right here. You can see that fill plug right there. So right here's that fill plug. I got this enough out of the way. We can just kind of fold it down out of the way. There we go. And this here has to pop up, and then we can take out that plug. It's like a like a locking plastic plug. So to take out those first two bolts, you can loosen up the other one. You can flex this heat shield down to get at it. Okay, on this transmission on the uh, outside towards the front and driver's side, this here is your transmission thermostat. And uh, they have not left any provision for bypassing that thermostat. So, from my past experience on these, I'm going to take off a cooler line up front. And the flow is going to come basically out of both of these lines. So, when we do the flush, that's the way we're going to do it. Um, it's not ideal. I wish I had a way that I could just bypass this, but the, the engineers have left no way for us to do that. So uh, we'll get that flush done, but uh, again, the flow will come out of both lines. I'll take one line off on the transmission cooler. I'll show you that here in a minute. And uh, I just wanted to show you that, that mechanism. On uh, some of the Toyotas and some of those other ones, they have a bypass that you can open up, and uh, it'll, it'll force flow right on up no matter what the temperature. Okay, we're in the engine compartment, and... Uh, that transmission cooler flush there is a transmission cooler line right down here in the bottom going into the radiator let's see if we can see it here decent get my hand out of the way and get some light in there so you can see it going into the radiator down there and what we're going to do is let's see if I can tape this decent it's a little tight there's a plastic keeper we're going to pull off right there okay and then there's a Jiffy Tight fitting on there. And I have a video for the Jiffy Tight fittings. And uh, if you're wondering how they work, uh, it, uh, that video explains that real well. I'm gonna try and get a little bit of light in here. There we go. So there's some tools we can use to take off that Jiffy Tight fitting. Right here's a set that I get from, from Napa. And it's an expensive set, they're about 100 bucks. Uh, the smallest one we need is a 3 8 and that's the one for this one. Get it out of here. And basically it opens up, goes over the line. And there's a snap ring in there that it expands so you can pull that line out. Uh, sometimes you can get in there with those, it depends how tight it is. But usually it takes two hands, one to rotate this and one to pull the line out. And a lot of times you just don't have the room to do that. So what I'll do then is use a, an O-ring pick to pull it out. So I'm going to see which one works best here on this one. And then we'll go, go from there. See if we can see that line down there. I think we can. Yeah, this is going to be really tough to see. I'm going to go ahead and get the snap ring out and get that line off. But that's where we're going to do our, our flush from. It's from that line right there on that, uh, on that transmission cooler. Okay, I've got the O-ring pick here. And right there is that little clip. When you take that off, put your finger on it. And you can pull it right up and out, just like that. And then set it somewhere safe here. And then you can pull your line out. It'll come straight out, just wiggle it a little bit. There it comes. Okay, there it is. Okay, I'm going to stick it back in there for now so it doesn't leak. But 
So that gets the line off so we can do that flush. Okay, so we got that, that cooler line off. Now we're going to put that clip back on. I'm going to see if I can show this decent. It's a little tough. Basically, there's uh, three slots around the outside of that. And you're going to bridge one of those slots and you're going to shove that back in. Okay, so I got that clip right there. You can see it. I'm going to try and put it in from the side. There it is. Okay. So now when we're all done, all we have to do is push that uh, line back in, and it'll snap right over that snap ring. Okay, this line right here, I want to get it out of this little keeper on the bottom of the radiator. And there's a slot right here at the end of my finger. So basically just take that and pry it out, just like that. That'll kind of get it out of your way. Now the next thing is putting in this line right here. And it's got to go straight in. So I'm just kind of showing you it's a 3 8 OD. It'll slide right in there and seal up on the uh, O-ring inside. But it's got to go in straight, and my hand's going to be in the way here. There we go. What I did is I routed it in behind the uh, computer over here. And then I can come in straight, otherwise that computer's kind of holding me out. And right there it is, okay? And then on the other line, I take a 3 8 hose. And put it right over the end of that ramp. There we go. Okay, so now we're all set for doing the flush. We got both uh, both hoses or both ends are of flow coming out to a pan. Okay, before I take the pan down or take out that fill plug here, I'm going to go around it with a uh, blowgun, get rid of any dust or dirt. Because what that'll do is help keep the dirt load out of that transmission while I'm uh, taking that pan off, and uh, also when I'm going to fill it. So. Go all the way around the pan, right there where that flange is at, because there's going to be dirt. If you if you live on a gravel road like this guy does, there's going to be dirt and there's going to be dust up there. And uh, knock off as much of that stuff as you can get it out of there before you take anything apart. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is take out that uh, check plug. With the engine off, it's going to run some oil out until it gets to, the, to where that standpipe is at inside the tranny. And I'll show you that when we get the pan off. And then all these bolts around here are a 10 millimeter bolt. We're going to start here at the front and work our way to the back so we can bring it down this way because there's no drain plug to drain out the fluid. So it's going to come flooding over the front of the uh, of that uh, transmission pan here and we're going to catch it. Um, we've got to work our way around. There's a couple bolts here that you're going to have a little harder time getting on. You might need a uh, universal or a uh, a wobble drive extension to get get these bolts here above the exhaust. So we're going to go ahead and remove that and then we'll be back with you. Okay, this bolt right here, right above the exhaust, I used a quarter inch drive ratchet with a 10 millimeter to get that one out because I couldn't get on it with the extension and the impact. So we're about ready to take this down and down to the last three bolts and there's going to be a flood of fluid coming over the front so make sure you have a big pan to catch it. Front here we got the cooler lines just a little bit in the way. I'm going to try and work by them. There we go. Okay. And I still got these back two bolts in, just kind of holding everything until that gets done draining.
Now most of the shops you go to are never going to get this pan off to change the filter. They want to hook the machine up and go. And this here, the way I do it, I'm getting that dirt load out of that transmission. Okay, so the bolts are all out now. I'm going to try and wiggle that out of there. See if I can do it without making too much of a mess. Come on. Come on out of there. Come on. Okay, you might have to unseat that gasket to get it out. It is that close, so. There it is. Okay. Now the gasket's a reusable gasket. This uh, truck has about 60,000 miles on the clock. And so the gasket itself, it's a silicone gasket with a uh, steel shim in the middle. And uh, we're going to be reusing that because it looks to be in really good shape. I'm going to clean it up. Okay, so now we've got that down. And the next step is to uh, get this all cleaned up. I'll let it drip here a little bit. And we also have the transmission filter here. And that just pushes up in place. It's got a neck over here on the front passenger side. There it comes. Okay. So there the filter's down. We can let that, uh, let that sit there and drip while we clean everything out. Okay, we got this all out. Uh, here's our filter. Put that in our green, green pan. We'll set that gasket aside. We'll dump out the oil. You can see that oil is a little, uh, little discolored. I said 60,000, I got to looking at it, it's actually got a little over 70,000 on this fluid. That's the original fluid. So it's starting to lose its nice cherry red color. Okay, so there's two magnets in here. And those magnets are going to have your wear metals on from the original break-in. And you can kind of see it there, it's that fuzz. And also in the pan here, on the bottom, any of the clutch material that wears, that's going to be in there. And uh, when we're all done, it'll be nice silver color. It'll be all nice and clean. We'll get that stuff out. You can kind of see it there on my finger. Okay, and that's that dirt load we're talking about. That dirt load is a problem for the, for the uh, spool valves. If you simply do a flush, you can stir that stuff up. And if that stuff gets up into your spool valve, you're going to have problems. It's going to hang it up, and then you're going to have a clutch that's not getting application pressure, and it'll burn up your tranny. So that's why I like getting the pan off wherever I can and cleaning out this dirt load. You can see right there what we got off that magnet. That's just one of the magnets. So clean both the magnets up. Clean up that uh, crap out of the pan. And I use ether to clean it up because it, it uh, dissolves the oil. And uh, just if you're going to do that, make sure you have no sparks or flame around or you're going to be on fire. You're all done it's nice and clean just like brand new just set it aside and we'll do that other one i'm going to clean the pan up real good i'm going to clean up that gasket and the other thing is with a gasket if you live in an area where they use a lot of road salt eventually that road salt will start eating into the outside of that gasket and it'll start jacking it and uh, what will happen is it'll it'll uh, compromise the seal but on this one here it looks to be in really good shape it's just got some dirt on the road gravel and i'm going to power wash it i'm going to clean it off with ether get it clean and dry and uh, there's no reason we can't reuse it. It's in good shape yet. It's good and pliable yet. Um, if you have more miles than that on, you might want to think about putting a new one on. But uh, usually they'll go 150, 200,000 miles without giving you any troubles. Ready. Okay, I've cleaned up the gasket. I've power washed it. Um, it looks to be in good shape. We're going to reuse that. I've got the uh, magnets all cleaned up. And they go over these dimples here in the bottom of the pan. So we're ready to go back up with this. It's all clean. And here's the new filter. Um, the seal on the filter is kind of a captured seal right there, so the new, new filter comes with a new seal, so we don't have to have any issues with that being up inside the housing, it stays with the filter. So we're going to go ahead and go into the truck and start putting things back up, and uh, we'll be back with you. 
Okay, this gasket area here, I want to clean that all up. You can see there's some, some dirt on the outside where that gas goes at. I want to try and get as much of that off as I can. And uh, just use a nice sharp gasket scraper. Don't gouge the aluminum. Just go along there and just scrape it off. All the way around. So we're going to go ahead and clean that all up. Get it clean and dry and then we're going to start putting the... Uh, the filter up in the pan. We'll be back with you. Okay, we scraped down that dirt off of that flange where the uh, gasket goes. Now we're going to wipe it all down so it's nice and clean and dry all the way around. Okay. Next thing we're going to do is put in the uh, filter. I'm going to take a little drip of oil off the bottom here and put a little bit of it on that uh, seal ring so it slides up in a little easier. Get that in place. Right there it is. Okay, we've got that filter up, we're ready to put that pan on, and we're going to have to unseat the gasket because right back here, these solenoids. They are low enough where they'll kind of interfere if you got the gasket on. So I'm going to pull that gasket back just a little bit. It can go up with the pan, but it can't be exactly on it because we've got to have the clearance right there at the back. So, wiggle that in. There it goes right there. Okay. So once we have that in, then we can get that gasket over where it belongs. And it likes to hook on things, so. Gotta kind of wiggle it around until we get it right where it needs to go. And there's a couple of uh, little uh, dowels here on the gasket that intersect with a hole in the pan to help hold it in place. There's one in the front, right, and the back, the back uh, passenger side rear. And let's get up there. Come on, gasket. Come on. Okay, there's the front's in, and right there the back one's in. Okay, now we can wiggle that up in place, and there's a little bit of pressure against the bottom of that pan because there's a spring on that filter, and that's what kind of keeps everything in place. So we're going to go around and put all these bolts in, we're going to snug them up, and we're going to torque them to about 90 inch pounds. So we'll put all these bolts in, and we'll get back with you. Okay, we got all the bolts up. We're going to snug them up. We'll just snug them up with the impact just so they're ready to be torqued. There's one there we have to use a probably universal joint to get on. Then from here we're going to torque them down, like I say, to about 90 inch pounds. And, uh, and then we'll start filling up the tranny. Okay, right here's our tranny pan. We got that all on. And we're going to go up and take out this plug for filling the transmission. What I have is a small needle nose. And it's, it's a rubber type plug. And basically what you do is just kind of go in and pick up on that, on the head of it. Just like that. And that kind of releases the, the pressure on the on the sleeve that's sealing it. Okay. And then just work it up and out. And there it is. The plug is out. Okay, so that's the hole we're going to use for filling it. And uh, I may have to get creative with a hose to get the bend on that I need. But uh, I'm going to see what's going to work here. 
So that gives you some idea how to fill that tranny. Okay, I've got a pumper here that I can put right in that hole. Most of you aren't going to have a pumper, so what will work, that hole, if you uh, get some half-inch poly line like at uh, Home Depot or Lowe's or Menards or something like that, half-inch OD, it'll slip right in there and then you can run it right up into the engine compartment and you can put a, uh, a funnel on your hose and fill it that way. But uh, this here shows you kind of where you got to fill it at and also the size of that hole. So. Okay, right here there's a step in the pan. You can see it's probably an inch and a half, two inches to that step. And what they're doing there, there's not a standpipe in this one. And when I had that pan off, you could see there's just kind of like a, a washer in there welded on with the threads for that plug. And uh, what they're doing there is that's the normal operating level of the fluid right there at the top of that washer inside that pan for when the engine's running. And you want to do this check when it's cold as well, not when it's up to temp. Okay, so what we're going to do right now is we're going to fill this transmission up until it comes out of this hole. And I'm actually going to overfill it because I'm going to be doing a flush. And uh, when I do the flush, you know, it's going to suck the, the fluid out of here. It's going to flush out the torque converter. It's going to go out to the, the cooler lines. And that's where we're going to capture that old fluid that's still in the torque converter. So we're going to fill it up until it comes out of here, put the plug in, and I'll probably add another extra quart, maybe quart and a half, above and beyond that much. And then, because uh, when you start it up, the level of the fluid is going to drop as it starts pumping it. So by adding an extra quart or quart and a half, I'm not hurting anything because we're going to be pumping it right back out the lines. So we'll go ahead and do that. Okay, there comes the fluid. We're going to put our plug in. I'm just going to snug it up with my fingers. And right now we're at just over three quarts, okay? This total fill on this is just over 11 quarts. So I'm going to add probably another two quarts or better. And uh, that'll give me enough room to do a nice flush. Okay, right there is six quarts. So I got six quarts in, and we're going to start it up, and we're going to do our flush at this point. Okay, I've got both these hoses hooked up. We're ready to do a flush. The fluid should come out of both hoses as we do this. Go ahead and start it up. Starting to see a nice color change there. We're getting there. Okay, shut it off. Okay, that fluid's turning to a nice cherry red here now. That flushes out that torque converter pretty good. GM threw me a curveball on this one because the last one I did was a six-speed automatic and I ended up having fluid come out of both hoses. And on this one here, it's just coming out of the cooler for me on that one. And uh, we had a good flow out of it, but uh, that gets the torque converter flushed. I also had them shift through the gears. I had them put it in reverse and then to drive and then to low for about two or three seconds in each gear. So, but again, we can see there's a nice color change coming there. It's turned into a nice cherry red. So at this point, we're going to go ahead and uh, button up that cooler line I'm going to show you the procedure for refilling that transmission and rechecking it. Okay. Here's some of the new fluid when I was checking the transmission. I'm going to show you here some of the old that we took out. Can I show you the difference here? There you go. Gives you some idea. Okay, we've done the, the flush and we got the fluid coming out of those cooler lines clean. And now we're going to refill that transmission until it comes out of this uh, hole again. And then we're going to start it up. And everything's cold right now, so we're checking it cold. And uh, after we start it up, we're going to shift through the gears for about three seconds in each gear. And then uh, what we should have at the end of that is we want just a, a dribble coming out of this hole when we're all done and ready to go. So I'm going to get my plug here handy. All right, and here we go. Okay, start it up.
Okay, I'm still adding fluid at this point. There, it's starting to come out. Okay, go ahead and shift it through the gears. Okay, you got it back in park. Okay, so we're going to let that fluid run until it's just a dribble. So right there, we're getting down to where it's starting to drip. That's about where I want it, right there. Okay. Go ahead and shut it off. Okay. So that's it right there for checking the fluid. And we're gonna to torque this here to, uh, whoop, I keep hitting the switch for the light. We're gonna hit, take this uh, plug and, and torque it to about seven foot pounds, eight foot pounds right in there. And there we go. Okay, so that's all done. Now, the next thing we need to do is uh, put that plug in over here where our fill is at, and then we got to put the bolts back in for that shield. And those bolts for that shield there, you're going to want to torque those around 10 foot pounds. And uh, the one on the side actually had some Loctite on it. If you want to put some Loctite on it, it sure wouldn't hurt. And uh, go ahead and torque them back down. And uh, so from here out, that's about it. The total I've used right now are about nine quarts. So the total fill on this is just over 11, so we got a majority of it out. Um, did a previous truck for him, he noticed a lot smoother shifting, and that's typically what we see with that Amsoil synthetic and that transmission, it, it shifts a lot smoother. So, I believe that's it for this transmission flush. Thanks for watching. Thank you for watching my video. Be sure to check out my other videos and subscribe to my channel at youtube.com forward slash C forward slash Donswell. I'd like to introduce you to Amsoil Synthetic Lubricants. We have the most complete line of synthetic lubricants on the market that offer you greatly reduced wear, extended drain intervals, longer equipment life. You can check that out at my website, donsoil.com. I also have a website for looking up fluid capacities. It's fluidcapacity.com. You can go there and print off the capacity of your engine oil, cooling system, transmission, transfer case differentials. Be sure to like us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash donsyntheticlubes. Thank you and have a great day.